how about now? Am I jumpy? Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three. Everyone who watches this YouTube video, this is how it's going to start. Hey, everybody, welcome to paint night. We had some technical difficulties and now we're back in the New York groove. Hopefully nobody said anything, so that could be a bad sign, but there's nothing. There's no other internet being used. Hi, Nikki. That should be good to go. I hate it. It's good for you. Awesome. Awesome. That's good enough for me to hear back on the conversation we are back to do the rescheduled it's over here monster relief you guys i can't even explain to you how many times people ask me to do this to paint plants to teach plants or flowers and i will be honest with you it makes me nervous because <laughs> i don't really like know like i like obviously i break it down into shapes and such um but to some extent it's like I paint what I see and I don't know how to teach people that. And I get stressed because I don't want you guys to have a bad time. You know what I'm saying? Okay? But we're going to do it anyway. Right? Um, this time, I think it is pretty safe to say you can start with a pencil if you want. You have to really trust your paint on this one. You have to really trust that your... Um, I know, sorry, I'm just like setting you guys up. I'm not setting up for failure. I think it'll be fine. I'm probably just overthinking it, okay? Um, you really have to trust your paint if you're using paint to start with. Like if we you use green like I'm about to use as well, you really want to make sure that your white is going to be able to go over those spots. Um, and for some people, it won't. And that's fair. That's okay. So I would suggest a pencil for y'all, okay? Oh, I just sneezed and yawned right before I started. So let's just pull myself together. And let's paint a monstera. Like I said, we're, we're going to have a good time. We're going to learn together and it's going to be great. Okay. I'm going to start by just going over the little spiel because it's been a long time. Um, just the rules and regulations of the studio. You know what I mean? Um, number one, I'm not a trained teacher, <laughs> obviously. Um, so if I explain anything weird, wrong, too fast, anything... Let me know. Don't be scared to ask questions, to tell me to slow down anything. It will help me teach everyone else in the future, and it might help other people right now or even watching YouTube later. Maybe you have the same question as them. So questions are good. We like them. I get awkward up here when no one's talking, so that helps too, right? Um, uh, number two is start with pencil. We've already talked about that. You can totally start with pencil if you want. Just please don't press too hard when you're using your pencil, okay? If you press really hard, the graphite will like dust and powder onto your page and it'll start mixing with your colors. And especially when we're doing something like a plant. Oh, I just keep pointing at the wrong side. A plant, you don't want it to get gray and dulled out, right? Like you want it to be nice and bright. So be careful with that. Um, where am I looking? Number three, don't treat it too precious. I know, especially a lot of the people who message me about wanting to do the plant, they're very particular and they will get, I know you, you know who I'm talking about, and you will not have a good time because you don't want to ruin it. Like you want the final to be perfect. And I'm telling you, when you try to let go a little bit and try not to treat it too precious and acknowledge that mistakes happen and we can fix them, almost every mistake is fixable in acrylic paint. <gasps> You'll have more fun, okay? We're just having fun here. Don't stress. And maybe, I feel like I should add this into my rules every time. Maybe this one, this first go that you're doing with me right now, isn't going to be good or great. And that's okay, but you'll learn so much. The second one that you paint is going to be so much better, okay? So for all of you two painting, a lot, uh, painting live along with me, for some of you, painting a painting in an hour and a half is very quick. So don't hold yourself to too high of a standard. Um, sometimes it will help to paint it again and you will be like blown away by the results. I know there's a couple other people that watch a lot that um, can vouch for that because they've done many multiple times and the second one's always better. Keep trying, it'll always get better, okay? Uh, number four is trust the process, which kind of goes along with that too. Um, it's gonna look weird at the start. It's not gonna look like a plant. Things are gonna be off, that's okay. Just trust the process that in the end we get some white highlights in there, get a little bit yellow, and we'll be happy, okay? Um, number five, water is your friend, especially when we're using acrylic paint. Remember, we're using acrylic paint. If you're using watercolor, you're going to need to have 
a white acrylic paint to be able to do it in the way that I'm doing it, just so you know. Um, oh, little RCV. Oh, Cinderella just bust my butt to find stuff to paint live tonight because it's in boxes. Cinderella, we love having you here. Happy that you came. I know that you, these are good nights for you too. It sounds like maybe things are crazy, so it's good if you can relax with us. Have a nice paint night. It's a plant. What's more calming than that? Um, what else is the last thing? Oh my gosh, number six is have fun. <laughs> so that's an easy rule. Am I right? I'm going to get some music on too. Um, easy. Have fun, guys. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a bunch of different plants at the end. They always look different. That's the best part. Oh, Nico's here too. All you regulars are back. Nice to be back to lives. I agree. It kind of feels weird, hey, that we didn't have them for that those two weeks. It feels weird. It does. Time flies, you guys. Time flies. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not. It's not time for me to announce all these things that are happening behind the scenes, but my life's going to get very crazy for the next couple months. I'm not going to lie to you. So just expect me being as frazzled as usual, maybe just like a touch more when I come to paint nights on Thursdays. Just so you know, okay? But it's all good news, not bad news. All right. Are we ready to paint a plant? I'll get the music on here. Let's see. Um, hey, it's been so long since we listened to the classic uh, royalty-free playlist. It'll feel like it's new again. On and up. Let's do this. Okay, nice. I like it. We're ready to go. We're going to start with pencils. Most of you. Watercolor pencil crayons are also great to start with. I just, obviously, not many people would have that on hand. Just if you are someone who does. Watercolor pencil crayon is great to work with when you are starting with paint. Because then it kind of blends in together. It's kind of fun. That's one thing you didn't grab. Don't worry, I'm not gonna start with a pencil. I'll start with paint. Um, I just think some people will probably rather start with a pencil on this one, nice and light. Um, and also, if you are following me on Instagram where I make most of the information for these types of things, um, usually I say if you have blue, red, yellow, black, and white, you can make any color, and that's not wrong, it's true. But I did say that this week, when you do um, the leaf, to probably get a green green is the toughest one to mix and it's always hard to get the green that you imagine and you want um not the end of the world yellow and blue and some white um will make you green if you need to at home and you can mix different like more yellow than blue like you can play around with that um but i'm gonna use what is this light green permanent today where's my camera me it looks a little bit not like the picture but that's okay Worst comes to worst, we can pop some color in there. Okay, so we're gonna get some green onto our palettes or use a pencil. And if you are painting, let's get your little paintbrush out. Whoop. It can be skinny and pointed. It can be even a little fatter if you don't have something that small. It can be a rectangle, which I can't find right now, but smaller is usually easier please bear with me my microphone's in a weird spot today and i might punch it a million times you have permanent green and light green but not light green permanent <laughs> you know what any of those will probably do i'm trying to think permanent green probably permanent green is probably our best bet all right, sorry people that with a pencil because you just need to wait for one second while I give one more teach, uh, one more step to the painters. Y'all know the drill. You're gonna take your paintbrush into your water dish and you're just gonna scoop. Yeah, Nikki. Oh, you guys. Nikki just changed the idea, and you should do it too. <laughs> Start with yellow. I'll see. I'll see. Yellow's tough for you guys with the camera to see if you guys can see, but. Nikki's not wrong. We should probably be starting with yellow paint. If you're starting to paint. You know what? That's why you can do it without you guys. Couldn't do it without you guys. Same deal though. You're going to scoop that water <laughs> into your palette. I'm just going to spin mine around here. Scoop water from your water dish into your palette close to whatever color of paint you are using. Okay. 
And remember, whatever lines we are about to do, you pencilers, you do it too, okay? So we have this really watery concoction here. There's like a little tiny touch of yellow, but it's a big watery pile of like chocolate milk consistency is what I always say. I might do mine a little bit darker just so that you guys can see it. And we are gonna imagine first that our canvas is what we're looking at, right? Oh, maybe on this side I can show. Oh, if I do this, I'm pointing both. Um, anyway, easily distracted. We're gonna imagine that leaf on this canvas, right? We're gonna picture where it's gonna go. It's kind of like a big heart, right? I always try to suggest, or always suggest that you kind of, with your hand, imagine where it's gonna go. Just so that you're not intimidated by the canvas, it's very easy to get intimidated by a big canvas and paint really small on the corner, or paint it too big and get it off the sides, which is something I do often. Sorry, my eye is just itchy. Okay, so we've got our paintbrush with our chocolate milky consistency of yellow, green, or we've got a paintbrush. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a little line and we're gonna imagine it like the center line of that leaf we're looking at over here, right? There's a line right through it. So it's almost in the middle. Maybe just like start kind of in the middle. We're gonna draw a line straight on down. Beep. And you guys can't see that. <laughs> Like I imagined. Let's try it one more time. Can you see that a little better? Oh, I wasn't looking and I went off course. Think a little bit. Again, yours is gonna be very watered down and very light. Like it's okay if yours is hardly seeable, right? Cause we're painting over top of it. This is just our underpainting. Um, I'm just trying to make it dark so that y'all can see it, okay? And again, don't worry if it's like we made it too long. Like, don't worry. Now, depending on how you made your line, if you are imagining this to be the very top of the leaf, you could start there, right? And we would bring the dip underneath it. Let's see, this is the top. Do you imagine what I'm saying? There's gonna be our big old heart is gonna be coming from this line. So we are gonna go Curve all the way up until we get close to the side. And we're just gonna come back down until we hit our line. Okay. I probably should be doing this in green so you can see it. I'm gonna go close to the border, like the picture that we're looking at is close to the border. Remember, since it is just our rough pen, like rough pencil draft basically, but some of us are using paint. It's okay if you do a couple scribbly lines, like see how like I made it a little bit fatter, I brought it out a little bit. And same on this side, we're gonna come up. Cute, right? Looks like a cutie little peach. Oops, and come on down to meet it at the bottom. So it's basically like a heart, but it's a little bit more round, right? It's big and fat. Right, right, right. Looking pretty good. We've got a yellow heart peach butt. <laughs> And again, like this is a very, like I don't think this is gonna take us long, but those have always my like famous last words. So maybe I should circle back with that. But we've got the heart, okay? We've got the line down the middle and it's probably gonna be easiest for us to start by just making some lines. We're gonna kind of cut it like a pie, okay? So let's make a line at the very top on an angle. See, it's on a little bit I'll make it a little darker so that you guys can see. Right, the line straight on down. Remember, I'm just separating this into shapes again too. Even though it's a plant, it's the same idea. I'm looking at it in shape form, in the simplest forms, okay? So the first two we've got here, cutting off the top of that heart. Do, do, do. Okay. Let me know if I'm going too fast, but I think we're doing good. I think we're doing good. So we've got these two 
split and then now we're going to keep going down the line and continue it but it's going to be at a little bit of a different angle now these lines are going to start going down as we go down and if you look at the flower it's not a flower it's a leaf you should be able to see that right see where these lines are coming and going right Okay, same on this side. It kind of mirrors the other side almost a little bit, right? But again, we're just doing the rough draft or drawing underneath, so it's okay if it's not perfect. And let's keep going, and now let's angle it down again even more. It does look like a weird basketball. That does look like weird basketball, that's a good call. And again, let's just bring it on down. <laughs> She's not wrong, it does look like a weird basketball. Oh, my eyeball, I don't know why this one is itchy. Oh, and I just ripped out some lashes. Oh, okay. Pull it together, Taylor. Okay, and where am I looking? Where is my picture here? And again, point it on down a little bit more angled. A little bit more. Right? And let's do one more. Beep. I guess on the other side too, what am I doing? Here's our weird basketball. Oh, Nikki, I'm so glad you said to do it in yellow. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh. All right. All right. All right. And now we're going to start laying out where the leaf is going to go. We're basically just taking away, right? Taking away the shapes. That's like the negative space of the leaves. So we can start. Where am I looking here? Let's start here. Okay, we have our first line up here, right? And we are going to come around our curve a little bit, right? So with this white line, or not white, it's yellow. Again, you're using your chocolate milky consistency or you're still using your pencils. From this initial line that we drew, let's curve our line until we meet up with our original heart on the outside. Do you see that? We've curved it, so now we have its own leaf there, basically. When from the line went straight, right about in the middle, we started curving so that it matched up with the line of the heart. Uh, heart, yeah, heart, that's fair. All right? And from that line, we're gonna come down. It's gonna feel a little weird, maybe, but we're just gonna make a U. Maybe a C is a better word for it. We're going to use a C, and we're not going to touch this line because that's actually the middle, right? The middle of the leaf lines that we can see. We're going to curve our little C and then follow this line. We're mocking it, right? See how we're parallel to the line underneath it, right? I'm going to go slow with that. Just maybe should we zoom? I forgot about my zoom mode. It's been so long, you guys. I don't even... Oh, there's the fish. Let's get that guy out of here. Go away. <laughs> it's been since Father's Day that we've done the zoo. Let's, uh... Oh, where is that? Great name. Let's just get that guy out of here. I don't know why this is being so weird. Okay, it's gonna be big for a second, but okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Go under my face. Okay, there we go. Bernie photobomb. <laughs> Beep! <laughs> okay. Here we go. So, see how I'm doing up here? We've made the top curve of the leaf. We're bringing the C on down and we're not touching this initial line that we did. 
We are parallel to it. And right when we get to the end, we're going to bring it back up. Do you see how I brought it up a little bit? We're just kind of building the shape of the leaf. It can be a little bit of an awkward shape. That's okay. Again, very rough at the start stage. We're just roughly laying out what we're going to paint green. And then what's going to become the background. All right. And we're going to sharpen off the edge, right? That's the edge that we want. We're going to come about the same distance above below this middle line because that's the leaf. And same thing. We're going to just draw that line to match. See how when we got to the end, I curved it down a little bit. But now we are building up that leaf. See, we're going to paint this white. And this is going to go away. And now we have an extended piece of the leaf. Right? I hope. Watch me like make it more confusing because I'm stressed that it's confusing and it's really not, so. I'm aware that can be happening as well. But slowly and surely we're building up this leafy. And remember, as much as I say it's gonna be so annoying, but this is just the rough draft, right? So we can build out, maybe you want this leaf to be curly or like that can come later, no worries. So we can bring, if you want, this the same distance. We can match up to the other C. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller on this one, but we've got a C, right? We brew the line, now there's a C at the end of it. And again, we're gonna follow this line by bringing it on down and kind of right at the end, curving it a little bit, right? We come all the way, and then there's a little bit more of an angle at the end here. All right? Boop. So we're painting away the negative space again, right? If I cover this line, now we can see like this is a leaf and there's one coming down there. But we drew that original circle just so that everything's in place. Because if we just started kind of drawing out these flaily leaves by themselves, it would be very hard for them to be uh, consistent in one's shape. So that's why we go simplify, right? What's the easiest shape? to start with and then we start breaking away at that shape until we get what we want and the thing that's fun about monsteros is like we can add something like we can add a hole in there right you can add a hole inside if you want that's how they work right like on this side too i don't know want to add another hole in there maybe it's a little bit longer another little beam Pew! Okay, and we're going down and see here, now we have another line that's kind of the middle of another leaf, and we'll go half about a little bit over halfway into the middle, and same thing, let's mock that line and bring it down a little bit. And now this is the outside of one leaf, right? Or whatever, one separation of leaf. And this one folds a little bit, so at the end of this line, we just want a little C, just a little baby. Pew. And as we come down, we're gonna come up to that line and touch it. Right, we've touched the line. Maybe if you want at the end here, you can come away too. But that leaf's coming a little bit closer to the other one. And like, as I'm laying these lines, I'm like, oh, maybe I wish this line was a little bit higher up, but whatever. We can make that happen later. Okay. And guess what? Same thing. We're gonna come back up in here into this plant. Maybe we're gonna go a little bit closer to this line because I was just gonna move my line up a bit. That's okay. But same thing. We're gonna mock that line and pull it on down till we match up to the outside of that heart. And then let's make a big old C at the bottom of this one. Let's make it bigger, why not? All right, big C. And with this, we can pop it on back up and bring it on down. Just to get, oops. Again, more of those organic shapes. 
Justin, that's okay that you had to dip. No worries. She's coming along, ain't she, folks? Oh, let's move this up a little. Oh, no, not that up. Let's move this. Hey, this. Why? What in the heck? Get that away. This thing. Come on. There we go. We want the bottom of our plant to be seen. Okay. So we've got that little curve. And the thing that's a little bit different about this leaf. At the, I know I keep calling them leaves. I know we're doing one leaf, but I'm calling each individual. I'm breaking it down into every, like, strand. <laughs> Not the proper terminology, but y'all picking up what I'm laying down. Section. That's probably a better word. Sub leaves. Okay, okay, here we go. See, if I don't know the answer, you do, and that's the best. Um, oh, I probably... In our leaf, there is actually like a hole up here in the reference photo, whatever. Oh, you're just making stuff up. <laughs> Even better. Let's make another egg in there. Another little bean. Boop. Again, put their, those things wherever you want them to go. Don't worry. A frond, maybe, says Cinderella. I just blindly agreed all those. Okay, the one different thing about this little bottom leaf here is our, it gets a little bit more confusing than just a straight line. I just tried to simplify it a bit. So we are going to use this straight line to finish off this side leaf and begin the other one. It's not like it's a middle like we've been using, right? All these lines have been middles. Now this line's gonna kind of be the edge, all right? From this line, we're gonna draw the C. But now the C is like an upside down U, right? And we're gonna bring that on down to the bottom. You can even bubble it a little bit. And when I say bubble it, like bubble, if that, can you see that? Doesn't really matter, we'll fix it with green. But see how I went from our initial straight line? I started from that to bring that big old double, no, nope, that's not a W, that's an under, Upside down you. My brain's gone today. And we're going to come on down here and not worry about that step until we get to green. Okay, so all right, we cap it off and we're just going to keep on doing that same old thing. Let's come from here, but now we're going to curve upwards until we get a little bit of the ways up into the middle. Look, I'm over it. This is middle, so I'm about more than that. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not sharp on my toes today. <laughs> okay, we've got a curve. Swoop. And at the top, we're starting to do those same thing. Basically, C's, but now they're backward. It's like 90%. That's a good, yep. It's a good 90. Right? We've got that upside down U. And you can play with it a little bit. You can make it straight or you can bubble it, right? Bubble down till you get to the top. And by bubble it, I hope you didn't, that makes sense when I use that word. See, if the line was straight, I would have brought it straight this way. But I bubbled it boop, a little bit. I will say that um, this is making you hungry for Swiss cheese. Ah, oh, Kenzie also, hi. I was just thinking, I was like, I feel like since Kenzie works on Thursdays now, we haven't seen her in here in a while. Hey girl, hey! It is sad. Sad days, sad days. Now Nico wants Swiss cheese. Here you go, Kenzie. Influencing everybody. Okay, and now from here, right? Look, we're capping off that leaf. Right? And let's bring her on down the line. Same thing, right? We have that middle line. We're mocking it. We're parallel to it above. And again, you can go as far as you want. Sometimes they go long. Sometimes they are short. Like, it's not consistent. They don't have to be symmetrical and perfect. We're going to come up to here. And we're going to curve and do another whatever sideways you, right? 
And same thing, come on down, folks. You can make it wobbly if you want. That's nice. Yes, Justin, I didn't text her the dates yet. But yeah. Yeah! We were just saying, Justin, how Kenzie's literally never met you in person. <laughs> Sideways you, basically half a bean. You are you know what? That's probably a better way to explain it, too. Very, a long extended bean. And same old, same old. Let's cap off that edge. And let's come on up. Do you? And start that bean on backwards. Alright. Need a truth prop. That's the truth. Just my face like this. Okay, let's just do that. And look, ooh, this one has a fun little hole in it too, right? You can go... A big long bean. Why not? All right? That one's like a little, the light's like reflecting on it, but you can see the shape a little better in there. You somehow have less lines on the left, does it matter? No. Meh. She grew its own way. I don't think you will, like after we get some green in there, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, drop my pen. It's a pencil, it's a paintbrush. Um, once uh, we get some green in there, it won't feel, you won't notice it as much. Okay, coming up the line here, right? Again, if this is the middle line, doesn't really matter. Like again, if you have less lines like cat, that's okay. But we are going to imagine that that's the end of it there. And we're gonna make this one, come on down. Come on down. But then if we're following our reference, like you guys know that I always do. You got some nice yellow drip going on. Heck yeah, Nikki, I like that. You know I'm a fan of the drip always. Let's just make this one a triangle. Oh, it's going crazy. Let's see how I'm making a big pie. Again, always look at my reference photo, right? Oops, that's... And I know that you guys... Can... Why does it always do this? There you go. I know you guys can't see what I'm pointing at with my mouse, but if you, you can see, look where my triangle is, right? And then look right here where that triangle is. We're just copying the reference. Respect the drip, Karen. <laughs> right? And again, like, that can get capped off, too. And it will. When I drip, you drip, we drip. I put your hand up on my hip. Ooh, that's a, that's a good flashback. I know one day I keep saying that we're just going to have a stream where it's, like, not meant to go on YouTube and we can just listen to all the good music because... That's how my streams used to be. Like, we would listen to the best music. But now it's royalty free and I'd get kicked off of the YouTubes. So we listen to this music that we've listened to so many times that it's like our own top 40 music. Yeah. Okay, to finish it off up here, we're just going to make another little boop boop triangle. Aw, cute. And we're going to play with the green. Don't worry, we're going to make that leaf into what it needs to be. And then the last final thing we got to do is still before we start painting our good old green leaf in there, um, we are going to paint a real you this time. From the edges of our heart, we're going to go see this you. Do you see that? Like if we, if I put my... My thumb too chubby? Yeah. I don't mean to be giving you guys the middle finger. How do I do this so you guys can see? See if I put my finger there, once we wipe that out, then we have that same shape of the top of our Monstera. Right? Right? Do you see that? So, 
That's kind of it all. You can, again, add as many of these little holy holy holes as you want. We obviously are going to add some more little lines. That's fine. But remember, since this was just our, like, rough... Um... Oh, sorry. ADD like a squirrel. Just got an email. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> over my head um 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 oh yes this is just our rough drawing right it's just our base sketch so we can work off of it right like if our line like we made our lines pretty straight out but if we look at the picture they curve down a little bit more right so like we use that line that we initially drew and then we can build off of it to create the lines that we see in the picture does that kind of make sense to you guys some of you might not even do it like maybe your lines already were curved but I'm not going to do it too much for us at this point because then it's going to get a little crazy in there and you guys are not, there's going to be so many lines. We're going to be like, what's happening? So let's get our green out now, okay? You know that we like to work dark to light. Um, this is a pretty light green. Like realistically, let me see if there's a different green that could work. Like hooker's green could work too, maybe. Maybe hooker's green permanent would work too. You guys know I'm not against using black to... Oh, did you say what because I said hooker? I'm not lying to you. Wait. <laughs> it's literally called hooker's green. Don't censor me, YouTube. <laughs> it's a color, I swear. Um... You need it. <laughs> it's the only reason is the color that I was saying before, the light green permanent, we can use it. I hope you didn't take it out on your palette already. Um, Cinderella. It's just a little light and then we'd have to put some black or like dark in the green and that sometimes is difficult. I'll just start with a darker green so you guys see what's up. Now everybody get a big old brush. This is the best time you need a big brush. We're slobbing paint around, folks, okay? It's important. If you get a big brush, get some green on your palette. We have yellow, make sure you have some more. You have sap green permanent. I have that too, sap green, great color. That's a good, sap green works. It's in here too, somewhere. Sap green would work too, I think. Sap green permanent. Yep, yep, yep. Very close. Oh wow, my camera just glitched hard. Emerald green. Do I have emerald green? Would it look kind of like this? Realistically, any green. You know that we work dark to light, right? So I was just thinking like, if you squint at our leaf we're looking at here, right? You can see where the dark spots are. So realistically, if your green is a little light, worst comes to worst, we can add a little bit of like black into it, even though it's a sin, um, to darken it up a little bit. But I'm getting a big old brush. I'm gonna use a square one cause I like using the square ones. You don't gotta, it's nothing. Um, you can use like a big old, this guy doesn't matter i'm just getting if i can open it I'm sweating from that already um you have your green on your palette you have yellow on your palette and we're gonna need white on your palette because we're working wet on wet folks so you want to have all the paint accessible to you you want a big old brush you want water and you want a rag of some sort around okay Get it together, Taylor. Okay, let's go. We've got our big brush that I must have put down. And we are gonna start by going right into our green and we want our paint brushes wet, right? Like you want it wet, but we're not worried about that like chocolate milk consistency. Like we want thick paint slobbing on there, okay? We're covering up some of our mistakes. We're cleaning stuff up. We're adding things to make it look like the reference photo that we're looking up. Hey, oh, banner. 
So I'm gonna start, remember, more paint than water on my paintbrush. A little bit of water will help you pull it around. But I'm gonna start at the bottom here, and I'm gonna just follow the shapes that we've already built, right? And see how I'm always brushing, like let, like I'm getting, oh, maybe I should stay zoomed. My brush strokes are always gonna be from the inside out. From the inside out. We're coming up this way. Let me look at my reference photo. I can't even see it. I guess I can't see it there either. Where did it go? You guys know I need to look at my reference photo for sure. Okay. So my paintbrush is loaded, locked and loaded. Remember, I'm going around the U that we drew right here. And I'm bringing the strokes in that direction of the shapes that we've built in there, right? But remember, on the inside of the U's, we're not putting green in there, because that's outside. That's the outside, okay? And the fun thing about this, right, you can add a little flick. That's not something that we drew before, but that little piece is just that little, if we're looking at our reference photo, this is what I mean by we're building off of our original drawing. Again, if you're a penciler, you should be painting at this point. And I'm gonna come close to and cover up a little bit of that original middle line that we drew. Right, see how I went over it a little bit, but I'm still going over and I'm still going like left, right. I'm not going up and down. I'm always following the shape of the leaf. And then I'm coming down the angle, right? See how my brush at the same time too, I'm following the angle of the shapes. If you paint completely over your middle line, it's not the end of the world because you can paint over top of it because acrylic is good like that. Okay, right, see, and I'm following the shape down in the same angle. How's that? But see, when we brush our, use our brush strokes consciously, right? Like when we, oops, that's a mess. Um, when we brush them in the direction that we want, like that we see in the leaf, it kind of like does some work for us in the like realistic department, right? They're picking up a little crappy on the camera, but that's okay. All right, you can take that, you. And before we get too far, I will show you how what I mean by working wet on wet, right? So we have our paintbrush, it still has green paint on it. I'm gonna get it wet and go right into my white paint. You can do a couple swipes on your palette. And I'm gonna start on the far side of my leaf, right? Look at your reference photo, like where is the light part? And when the paint is wet, I'm just gonna brush some of that white color in there, see? Right into that wet paint. I'm gonna do a couple strokes of white right into the wet green. And this is important to have your rag. Like I did those couple swipes and then I'm gonna wipe off the extra green onto my rag, go back into that white again, and go back into this wet where in our reference photo we see that there's lighter spots, right? And then I'm gonna wipe off, right? Get that green off. And then you can go back in there with a cleaner brush and kind of buff out those colors. But again, I'm still going like up and down, like the direction of the leaf, right? Fanning outwards, if you see like the stroke of my hand. But how's that so far? If working wet on wet stresses you out, it's not something that you have to do. Like you can wait for everything to dry and then you can mix these colors, right? Like you can mix that light green color yourself on your palette if you want. I'm just lazy and I don't like to. So I like doing these like wet on wet styles, right? Where it just kind of blends on the canvas. But like, see, like you can add some more white there. All right, into the corner. Again, I'm working heavily off of our reference photo to see like where are these light parts, right? Like. Gwent looking at this Monstera and see where the lighter aspects are. Loving this, Cat Attack, love that. Love to hear that too. 
Same thing up here, right? We can add some little bit of that white in there. Buff that baby out. Remember, like, a rag is very helpful. Like, cleaning a brush off. Like, if you're blending stuff in and you're like, wow, it just turned to green and it's messy right away. Like, maybe that just means you need to just get some of that green off your brush. Get back in there. But we're going to be doing this the whole time. So, right, clean off your brush. Get that white off there. But see, too, just as we're going through, I'll... Sorry if I'm jumping around like a psycho star in my life. Um, see how thick this original line was, right? And see how I came and I've painted over a little bit of it, but it's peaking. Like, you can still see, like, very small, if you look at how thick it is down there, right? You paint up to it and you get some really nice, like, textures and peekaboos. Okay, same old thing. You wash off that brush and you get dark green back. Right? And same old thing. Like, let's, you want a little water on your brush, it'll help you pull that paint across. But, same as what we did before paint up to, but not fully over that middle line that we did. We're keeping out of that like little long bean that we made. Because that's the outside, that's the negative space, that's not the leaf. That's gonna be our background. Right? And again, the more water you add, you can get like translucent spots if you like. But again, too, like this one doesn't have as many light spots on this front part, but I'm going to go in with some white right into that wet green just at the top right here. All right, blend in a little bit just to get a little bit of highlight on the top end of that leaf. Again, people who are very interested in drawing, painting, learning more about technique, like I highly, highly suggest like if you don't go to classes or to a school like on YouTube, learning about like shadow and light and reflected light and how it works. Cause I don't teach you guys that it's, you, you can't teach that in a, in an hour and a half class. I'm just showing you, yeah, like depth, exactly. I'm just showing you how to look at a reference photo and mock what you're seeing, okay? But that's just like the surface. If you're somebody, like I said, who wants to get more into art or learn more about drawing or how or why, like, why is it lighter there than there? That is um, important to know if it's something that you are interested in. But if you're someone who's like painting for fun, it doesn't matter. I'll teach you what you need to get a cutie picture in the end, okay? So we're still going through. Again, if you didn't draw, like let's say, like in our reference photo, the circle is right there. Like there's like a bean right there. If you want it to be exactly like the reference photo, you can draw that in there. Or if at the end you decide that you want to add that bean onto it, like we can just paint white over top of this green, right? Like we can paint away. Again, just like this negative space, like we can paint away on top and we won't. Um, you won't miss anything. Like for some people, again, I don't teach it exactly how I would every time just because of people's quality of paints at home. We never know what you have. But realistically, you could have painted this whole circle green, this whole heart green, if you wanted, and then painted white to like paint away these shapes, right? Um, but some people's paint just won't yield like nice results like that. So I just uh, teach it this way. Yeah, cat attack kind of that. See, it's not like a right or wrong way. I kind of teach you guys like the easiest way. Not the easiest way, foolproof way maybe, the most foolproof way. The lines confused you, yeah, see, that's fair. That's fair. That's very fair. Cause like when I, like if you guys watch the time lapse when I paint them, like I, again, since I've been painting and drawing for so long and breaking stuff into shape, when I look at this, I would just draw this, like I would physically just draw the little rows as we went, right? Um. There's just so, there's so many different ways that you can do it. But, see, in the end, we're figuring it out. 
Oops, what am I doing? This is wet. This is wet. Remember, this one kind of touches each other. That's okay. I'm leaving some of the yellow peeking through, as you can see. Again, that's totally, totally a my style thing. Like, I like that in painting. I like when you can see um, your work. I like when you can see whatever. The mess underneath it, whatever you want to say. Um... But for some people, they don't like that. You can paint right up to that yellow if you want and cover it completely. That's fine. That's cool. And again, remember, at the ends, you can kind of add that little tip-tip at the end just to make that more realistic. And again, going in with white on our brush give it a couple swipe swipies on your palette and let's add that white highlight in there exactly what we see on our reference photo wiping it off on my rag a little bit and then just buffing that baby out right how's that And again, when it dries a little bit more, you can add more, like if you want to be more of a, like a whiter highlight. If you're worried that like, oh, your paint dried and you missed your opportunity, no, we can go back on top, don't worry. We're gonna add a little bit more of a white highlight right under that yellow line we originally did. And look at that beauty coming together. Same here, right? A little bit of lighter on this side. And again, like I've said before, I know that people watching, you don't see all of the ones I've done. I always just like talk at you guys like you've all done every single one. You've been here every time. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I like to make sure people are aware of or remember as they're painting these things especially nature things, things that are found in nature, to not worry about it being perfect. Like perfect lines, perfect symmetrical, perfect edges isn't really like realistic. Things in nature aren't really like that. So when you paint stuff that's meant to be natural with a very sharp, perfect, whatever you want edge, um, sometimes it takes away from your final product because then it looks a little too mechanical and a little too man-made. So sometimes it's good to kind of let Lucy a little bit and um, let those lines get a little crooked and crazy or go over the edge a little bit or I don't know you know what I'm saying remember if your paint isn't pulling well across the canvas um, this is a good like sandpaper oh where's my finger like sandpaper is the best way for me to describe it. That usually means that there is not enough water on your brush. It's called dry brushing. Realistically, it's not a bad, it's a technique that can be handy in certain situations. Um, but sometimes, until you're, until you're aware of what uh, paint looks like when you're using it with more water, less water, whatever, you might get frustrated and be like, why is this paint not going far? Like I put a little bit on my, I put a bunch of my paintbrush and it's not pulling well. Most of the time it's because there's not enough water on your brush. Do, do, do. Right, we're filling those babies in. And if we look at our reference photo, We'll see that this leaf, it's a little bit lighter on the bottom. So again, going in with some water, going in with some white. It's okay that my paintbrush is dirty. Let's just do a little swipe swipe of that white through that wet green. Wipe off your brush a little bit and then buff that baby out with the wet green already on your palette or on your canvas. Beauty, I think it's looking pretty good. Yep, 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 okay. 
It is hot in here. Okay, sorry, distracted again. Tay currently on fire, honestly. And I don't know if you guys saw on my Instagram, I posted. Um, I have like an old ass air conditioner that I use um, in my studio. And it is loud. So like I had it on and like my microphone was like recording full loudness. <laughs> Even though the air conditioner was all the way on the other side. So I don't think I could use it while we're chatting here. You just be like, <laughs> in the background. <laughs> the whole time. Okay, just back to the monstera. Coming on down the line here. And this one too. I just painted over the line a little bit because it wasn't really where I wanted it to be. That's fine. Oops. You guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit happy that my... Like, well, the Canada Day and uh, the other paint night that I had to cancel fell on that hot week because, you guys, I'm a different person when I'm hot. <laughs> it's cranky. So for those of you who don't know where we're from, like in Canada, it had like this like record-breaking heat wave. Like we've never had constant heat like this before. Cinderella just casually moved when it was 48 degrees where she's from like see what I like we we're not meant for this weather Like we go to places in the states like Florida, Texas, whatever or even what overseas that are really hot places That they're prepared for hot. So everywhere you go it has air conditioning it ha like everywhere every public space every home Because you need it to survive right here. We don't we get like it's 35 like twice a summer basically um, and then we had it for like a week straight. Um, we're ready for cold, right? So like if we have plus 15s, which is downtown, all of our like city buildings are connected by like warm, elevated, basically sidewalks because when it's winter time and people, businesses need to get between each other, it's like not easy to walk outside because it's so cold. They're like second floor tunnels. That's a really good way to describe it. Describe it. And like we have place like every parking lot usually has somewhere you can plug your car in in case it gets too cold, right? Like we're prepared for cold. Everywhere has heat. Like your car, it's, we're set for cold. We're not set for this hot, hot um, weather. So like my parents have air conditioning. We like hung out there. So nice. We have like a portable one in our bedroom for when we sleep. And then I have one in the studio now. It wasn't in at the start. But it's because I literally couldn't work because I'm just like sweaty, like grumpy. <laughs> My apologies, everyone. But I am. I'll admit it. I'll admit it when I'm wrong. Dan like loves the heat. He like walks home from work like in the smoldering heat, just like not even sweating, so happy. He like gets home, I'm like naked, dripping sweat in front of a fan, like pissed. <laughs> anyway, back to business here <laughs> oh my upper lip just sweats all day. anyway so you know what can you do we've survived it i would have been so cranky on paint night it's a good thing we didn't have to do it i realize i've just been painting this whole time and not telling you how uh to do anything but we've been basically doing the same steps that we have the whole time a good way to um do that little flick at the end of the leaves that we're seeing that are just so monster and cutie like see right now i'm just gonna draw a green line fault that's like the heart right we drew the whole heart and i'm gonna go past our little leaf that we drew passed out i traced the line and now i'm gonna come in like i'm gonna come in a little bit from that ledge that we just drew and bring it up from there does that make sense See, I followed the line and then I came back in a little bit and I drew the line now from there. And now I'm gonna do the same old. I'm using the same dark green right out of the tube. I'm painting always from the edge to edge. I don't wanna go side to side. I wanna go edge to edge, edge to edge, edge to edge, edge to edge. All right, 
Justin asking, how does Romain, how does Romain, how does Dan do that? He's Romanian, that's how. He's not built like us little baby Canadians that are just meant for cold. It's so funny. He's like, why is everyone complaining? We never get this. It's going to be gone in a second. I was like, I'm complaining because I can't do anything. <laughs> Sid saw people wearing sweaters and she wanted to slap them. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, and, uh, like, I remember when we went to Phoenix once like we went to phoenix like in june like why would we ever do that in our lives let's just go to phoenix when it's like the hottest it ever is it's like illegal to like climb some mountains when it's that hot um and uh we like you have to go to the places and things you want to see right in the morning or right as sun's going down like during the day it's too hot to do anything and we'll just like <laughs> sit in a pool sweating and there'd be people, like, doing cardio, like, running outside. And you're just like, how do you survive? Oh, my gosh, Grunge Mania. How are you doing? It's been a long time since I saw that little cutie face. I actually was just thinking about you because I just talked about dry brushing. And that just makes me think of Adam. Okay, we're still going through. The thing with this leaf now is on this side, most of the leaves are dark. We don't have to do as much of that highlighting business like we've done on the other side. You've been, it's been way too long, sorry. You never have to apologize, you guys. Life's crazy. Trust me, if I didn't have this commitment, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm surprised that I have been here basically every Thursday for the over year that I have been. It's hard for me to have something like that. Big news, we bought a house. Where did you buy a house? Congratulations, Adam and Stacy. That's big news, and dear Ron, you little Southies. Love it. Congratulations, that's a big deal. Me and Dan are hunting the realtor.ca world these days too. Trying to join that homeowner journey like you. Yeah. Congrats. That's exciting. When do you guys get your possession? August 27th. Ooh, ooh. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Awesome. Stoked to pray, display your K art. Well, and your own because since paint nights, you're a master painter. Here, painters, I keep here. I am forgetting where we're going again. Um, this side of the leaf, it is lighter, close to the center, whatever stemmy thing that we did, right? So we're doing our good old wet on wet, blending in a little bit of that lighter color close to the stem. Let me see. Get that in there. And remember, look, like I'm following the streak, right? I'm following the direction of the leaf. She has them all. Uh, by the way, me and my brother and sister-in-law gave my mom tape paint nights for Christmas, and she has them all on the same wall and is so proud. <laughs> That's so cute. Love that. Thanks for telling me that. It makes my day. And then Adam says your lashes look full today, so you guys just came in here to pump my tires. Saying all the things that you know just melts my soul. Thanks. <laughs> they are pretty full today. You guys, I paid good money for these babies, so y'all can compliment them all you want. I love it. <laughs> and it's quarter after nine. Like, how? Here I said it's not going to take us long, and we're doing it long. So we're just still going through. Right, you guys? Not too stressful. We're just drawing that initial line of the heart and bringing up that green the right pump your hoot hoot love it right let's just bring that up and adam adam just kidding <laughs> and we are cruising 
See, look, I shouldn't have said it. I know I jinx myself every time where I'm like, it's a short one. It's not going to take us that long. It's just green on yellow. Look how much better this looks because we started with yellow. Pfft, thank God for Nikki. Okay. Again, this leaf pretty dark. Once it dries, we can make it darker again if you need. My light's reflecting on it pretty light, unfortunately. But again, not too much light on this side. We can keep it going back to the next leaf. And again, remember, they have those cutie little lips, but they don't have to go all the way. You kind of curve it back. Why is this paint not going? Whoop. How is that? This one has a little bit of light at the bottom of it. But wow, the leaves coming together. This one's better than, well, not better than, it's a different style than the other one that I drew before. And it's not like it's a, I can't give you all my secrets type of thing. I'll teach you guys all the things. It's just technically it's hard to teach you the very watercolory ones, like the uh, the Monstera that I painted, is very like watered and splattered with like acrylic inks and stuff. It's just a little difficult to teach it. All right, going back in with a wet brush, right into my white, right into this bottom corner of this little leafy. Brighten it on up. And remember, you can use a rag if you need to buff it out or to clean off the brush to help you buff some stuff out a little bit. But remember, where are all the dark spots? You want to keep those the darkest if we're looking at our reference photo. Do, do, do. And we're coming on up to the next few little parts. And same old, same old. Just go on in there and fill up. I don't know why I just turned to such like a country star. <laughs> when we start just doing redundant things. Just round them up, bring it on down. Whoop. And again, remember I'm going left to right. I'm still like, I'm not going up and down. I'm following the direction of the original line that we did in the middle of that leafy. Oh, I just painted right over top of that circle. Eh. We'll get to that later. This one has like no lights reflected on it, so I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. And this little back leaf. So again, we'll follow the heart. Maybe we'll go off course of the heart a little bit. Come in a tiny touch with that dark green. And then we're gonna start from the other side of the U, because remember, right, there's a U here that we drew. And let's just, boop. Bring it on up to that little lippy we just made. Okay. And this one has a lot of light in it as well, right? So in that dark green, we're gonna go back in with our wet paintbrush into the white. We're gonna, whatever, put it on our palette a couple times, rub it in, and we're gonna leave the little nip, <laughs> nip is the wrong word. 
<laughs> we're gonna leave that little flicky thing that we just drew there. We're gonna bring the white right up to it. See how now there's like a triangle left over of that dark, right? And we're gonna pull it in to the green and down. Basically this whole, we're painting like that whole triangle, a lighter green. But see how we left that little dark spot on there? Okay, I think I'm just going in with my lighter white for a second. But I think realistically, the leaf itself is basically complete at the moment. I'm just getting a little bit more of the green. See, I had a lot of water on my in my uh, paint when I was over here. I'm just going to go back in again with the same green. It's just over top the dry. It's like the paint's dried a little bit, so I'm just adding a little bit more of the same just green right on top just to darken it up a bit because the water that was in there just lightened it up when it dried a little bit more than I wanted it to. But again, remember, I'm getting where these dark spots should go by looking at my reference photo and squinting. Sometimes squinting at it helps to see, like, <laughs> it just froze on me doing this. Um, sometimes it helps to squint at it to see where the dark parts are. Sometimes it helps. Okay. We've got a leaf. Before we get to any crazy, not to any crazy, before we start doing anything else crazy, we are going to just get a smaller brush out. Um, again, can be pointed, can be squared, can be whatever you wish, whatever's easiest. And what we're gonna do is take some of our yellow, a lot of our yellow, probably mostly yellow. Let's see if. So see right here, I got a bunch of yellow on my palette. Oh, as the sign goes up. I'm gonna take a touch of green. We want, if you kind of look at our picture here, again, it's probably like, if you have like a neon-y light green, that's probably your best bet, but just to be safe for everyone. I'm gonna grab a bunch of yellow. We're gonna put a little bit of green in it and we're gonna put a little bit of white in it. Just so you guys know what I'm trying to achieve here, if you look at the center line in the reference photo, right? It's like a lighter, like limey green. Again, if you're somebody who has lots of colors and you have that color, go for it. I'm just gonna mix yellow with a little bit of the green we're using and a little bit of white so that it feels a little, like it matches with the picture a little bit, okay? And we have lots of water on our brush, but we're not making it that like chocolate milky consistency. We don't, that's, that's okay. We want more paint than water, but water will help us pull this paint across. And we're just gonna go right down the middle. And it's gonna get a little bit thinner as it gets to the bottom. And we're gonna stop right before the bottom. Do you see that? I don't know why I'm so tall today on my camera, but. See what I did there? I just put it right over top just to strengthen where I wanted that line to go. And it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And then if you want, you can bring a couple of these lines. Again, maybe use a smaller brush. That brush was a little bit bigger. Remember, I guess I should do our pressure test just to be nice here. Remember that a paint brush, when you want to do thin lines, it's all about pressure, okay? So if I have my paintbrush and I want to do just a really thin line, I'm going to put, if you can see, let me put my paintbrush. See in the top corner here, just the tip of the paintbrush is touching, right? Like just the tiny tip of that paintbrush. And I'm going to draw a line and look, it's a nice little small line. But if you look at the side and I push my, oops, I messed up the experiment already. But see like the whole paintbrush, the whole thing is touching the canvas. And look how thick of a line that is, right? Because every bristle when pushed makes it a thick line. But if you put really lightly and it's just the tip of the line, look at how thin that can be, right? 
So just be conscious of that when you're trying to make these lines. But I'm using that yellowy green white concoction we just made. And I'm just gonna bump a couple of these lines up, okay? And like lightly, like I'm not even gonna go all the way. We're gonna go swoop, but not all the way to the bottom. Down here too, just a little one. Just a little one. Just a little one. Right. Just a wee line. Exactly. But see what I mean? Like it's not going all the way to the tip. We're going just about, that one's about 80%. Just bumping up a couple of them. Same on this one right at the end. Just a little meep. And the way that you can get different lengths or width thicknesses of lines on your, um, in one stroke is by pushing hard and pulling up on the brush. You can play around with that. And I know you guys, it's been a long time, like a long time. Oh, right. You did these with a pencil. Oh, well, exactly what we're doing right now is the same. Like you'll just draw them on now. If that's okay, Nico. Sorry. I always forget that people on YouTube can't see. Um, the comments and he said say you did this with a pencil what would you suggest for them talking about i'm assuming talking about these lines that we did right you're the best you're the best i always appreciate when you guys ask the questions that need to be asked for the good of the group you sweet souls yeah because just yeah here i am talking about look at that yellow peeking through <laughs> you guys don't have that so yes, you would do exactly that. You will do that step right now. You will draw that on. Right, and we can clean stuff up if you want to clean up some of the edges. Cool, cool, cool. But we are gonna start with an extra cleanup right now. We are gonna get white on our, whatever it's called, their palettes. Get some white on your palette here. Yeah? And we are going to start the background by using white. And then paint the background in and then we just have some like highlights and we'll be good to go. And it's 9.30 so I think that's good timing. That's good timing. So, oh, we didn't paint the, do you guys want to paint the stem? Or I can like hear my upstairs neighbor. So easiest way to paint the stem would probably be let's get the same green that we were using the whole time right out of the tube green. And let's just draw a line straight on up. Boop. Some of you might want to, everyone says yes to the stem. Some of you might want to use a ruler. Don't gotta. We're gonna do dark first and when that dries, we're gonna do light right on top. Just the same old, same old like we always do. Okay, doke. To start to the end. Green marker totally works too. Easy peasy. Oh my god, you guys. Stampede's just a start, and there's already, I can hear. Um, that's somebody on a microphone downtown. And I can see him partying at Broken City. The city is alive. Okay, I'm just looking for a paintbrush. Okay, okay, ew. <laughs> uh, I might be leaving downtown soon, so I have to hold on to these. I know I'm gonna miss it. I hate it, but I know I'm gonna miss it. Um, let's, uh, I'm getting a bigger paintbrush. 
Whatever, again, it can be cubed or whatever. It can be pointed. Oh, my hubby loved your reaction to the baby today, Ross. Got yeah, Bubby Yoda. I'll show it to everybody after. It's I, it's right up on the counter. You guys, Nikki made me something very special. And I filmed my reaction of opening it because it's, uh, I knew, I knew it was going to be good. Okay, everybody, we have white on our paint brushes, right? And we're just going to messily and quickly just kind of start erasing some of the yellow that we don't want to see, right? What's more paint than water on your paintbrush because you want it to go on pretty opaque. I personally don't want to erase all the yellow. Like I want some of this yellow to peek through. So I'm just doing it in some of these like very obvious spots, right? Like some of these lines I don't want to be seen anymore. Like in our U shape, right? The U, we don't want any yellow in there. Again, if I always suggest, just depending, everybody's canvas is different, everybody's white paint is different. Whenever you use this technique, this like white out technique, um, I always suggest, even if you don't need it to be full all the way around, that you should, because then the white kind of adds, it looks like almost like a white outline. Like, let's just imagine, like, let's pretend that's the only white that I fix. From farther away, you'll be able to see that there's some of that white. So if you do it around the whole thing, it makes it seem like it's intentional on the whole thing. Does that make sense? So that's why I'm going in some of these spots. Like, see right here, it's like a little bit. I went a little bit out of the lines with your white paint. Like, clean that baby right up. I'm doing it kind of chunky just because I like, like that. Look. Look. Again, if you didn't like the yellow, like you could paint white right up to that yellow, but I'm personally going to leave these little peekaboos. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just dropped it in the paint. Again, Nikki, thank you for the stitch. That was just the best. I mean, not stitch. Sorry, it's a baby Yoda. Um, I don't know why I said stitch. Because I'm looking at him right here too. The stitch is on this side and the Yoda's on that side. I was shooketh. Oh, I just went over the lines. Because the stitch in the Yoda painting. Yes. Oh, my God. Exactly that. Yep. <laughs> Not wrong. See, again, I'm just going through and just getting rid of some of these obvious ones, like the heart outline that we don't want to see. Cleaning up some of that edge. Do, 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 do. And again, remember, like I, I want to paint the background a big funky color, probably. Um, but uh, using this white first, just to kind of neutralize some of the areas, is helpful. Some of you might want to use a smaller paintbrush in some of the areas. That's fine too. You're welcome. I had to make it. You were Bob for Halloween and did the manto. I know. It was... I couldn't believe the accuracy. It was beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. I was like, it's doing our paint night. <laughs> okay, now I feel like I just... I should probably get it because people who don't, like, have no idea what we're talking about. Keep painting away the white, everybody. Look at him. <laughs> it's Baby Yoda painting the Mandalorian. Isn't that so cute? It's perfection. And she like 3D printed it. Like, look at this. Oh, wait, that one doesn't work. Look at him. <laughs> look at the look at the detail. Oh, I love it. So cute. I know. You guys, that was fan mail. I like, got the mail. I was so surprised. And when she said that she wanted me to like to see my reaction opening, I was like, this is going to be good. 
and it was better than I could have ever imagined. Oh! Wow, I just realized how hot I am again standing up there. I'm swassing over here. Whoop. Okay, so again, remember, like, this whiteout technique is the best of the best. I always tell people, um... If you were, if you want to spend money on one thing as an acrylic painter, or if you want to learn painting or whatever, you wouldn't have to get all high quality paints, but a high quality white will honestly change your life. Because again, there are some whites that don't do a smooth cover or like you need to do a couple layers before um, they start going opaque over stuff. Um, so I always like golden acrylic titanium white is if you are somebody who cares or wants to invest in some art supplies to make some stuff easier for you golden acrylic titanium white is the best even if you like because i know a lot of people use dollar store paints and there's actually like when i teach paint nights um we use dollar store paints and they're great most of them are actually great Again, it's just the white might struggle, so you can use this paint with any type. Hello, Rabba, Rabani, Rabani. So bad at usernames, I apologize. Um, how's that going? We've kind of white out at all of the areas we don't like. I'm just gonna bring this white down a little bit more just to keep it consistent. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Joe Kaiser, I've been good to see you because I've been missing for a couple of weeks. I've been gone. I've left y'all hanging. But good to see you as always, cutie little. I always, that little, I just know that little face. I know that little face. And remember, we're talking about white out teen. Guess what? Where'd you go? Oh, right. When you left, I was like, I'm confused. I don't remember anything. I know. I that <laughs> okay, with white. Remember, like, I painted over a circle up here, right? Like, guess what? Not anymore. She's back. Maybe you want this circle to be bigger. Maybe you want to clean it up. I don't know. Whatever you want. Whiteout is your friend. Use it like you would use whiteout at school. And it's funny. I always say it's school because that's like the last time I ever used whiteout. But I realize that people probably use whiteout at real jobs all the time. <laughs> but same technique, y'all. White it out. Hello, Pokey Carol. Welcome to the Studs studio. Sorry, I'm just shortening everything out. All right, how's that? That's pretty nice. And guess what? We have pure white on our paintbrushes. Right, everybody? So if we, not if we, so it's the perfect time for us to do some nice white highlights, right? And again, we're always being conscious of the direction of our little, what are they called? Leaves, rows, whatever we called them, right? So if I'm putting a little white highlight, I'm still gonna follow the direction. Same on here, maybe we're gonna put a little bit of a white highlight just in the middle of that stem. It's not showing up great on uh, the camera. But again, too, we just want a couple little white highlights in some of the place. Always out from the center. Yeah, that's a better way to describe directionally, right? You're going from the center out towards the end of the leaf. And remember, I'm looking at the reference photo and squinting at it to see like, where are these bright pieces of highlights coming out, right? Pieces of highlights, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Like down here, there's one little bright spot. Boop. Same at the tip of the front leaf same as maybe a little streaky right down the middle there who knows let's do another one up here too Whoop. 
That one was pretty crazy, actually. That one's pretty crazy. I'm just gonna get my rag wet, and I'm probably just gonna, like, wipe it out a little bit so it's not as crazy. All right? Like, that's pretty pretty, if you ask me. What else can we add some? Another, like, technique-wise is if you want to go back to that, like, chocolate milky consistency that I talked at the start, right? You scoop some water from your palate, uh, from your water, onto your palate and mix in a little bit of white. So this paint is going to dry pretty translucent, right? So it's going to go on a little aggressive, but it'll dry with a nice translucent um, finish to have a nice little bright highlight in there. And realistically, that is it. We have the leaf, how we want it. You can play with like yellows. You can do like what I just explained with that like highlight with white, right? You can do that too. Go in with a bunch of water into your yellow and you can maybe bring some like yellow highlights through. Maybe I'll zoom that in so it looks, you can see. It looks like nothing on the screen. Um... Uh, it doesn't really show up what it looks like to me to you guys so maybe we'll just pretend that that didn't happen but again if you wanted to add some yellow values you can do that with your white watered down yellow but one thing that I'm just gonna suggest before um, you notice I use a lot of blues in my plant paintings. Can we maybe do that? Ah, uh, yes. Let me see, let me see, let me see. It's funny because again, remember like I'm the only, I'm very reference based. So in the moment, like when I'm looking at the picture is like how those decisions are made. Um, so the reference photos had lots of blues in them, but let's see. We could, realistically, yeah, hey, let's, uh, it'll make it more colorful and fun. Um, if we add, I'm probably gonna go with like a phyllo cyanine blue, green shade, not red shade. Green will clash with it a little bit more. And again, it's best when you're going in with these colors that are so drastically different than what you are using, it's good to either one, go in with that watered down consistency at first just to get kind of like a wash or to mix it in with a touch of the green that you're already using, right? Like, so then the color feels a little bit more um, in the same family as the color that um, you've already used, if that makes sense. So I took that th cyanide blue. <laughs> However you say it. Th I thalo cyanine blue. I added a touch of this green that we've already used into it. And I'm going to add some water so it's a little more translucent than just thick on there. And how... This is actually good. I'm glad that you uh, said that, actually, Nico. Look, you guys, you saved the class today. You and Nikki Bo. So with this color, what I'm going to do is when I squint at my piece, this is where the darkest, darkest value that we can see in the painting is going to go, okay? So when I squint at it, I see like down here. Maybe I guess zoom, sorry, I keep going far away. And you can almost use it as like the outline, right? So it is the darkest around the edge here. You can sharpen the edge, but this is blue. So like, I don't know how well it's coming up on the camera. It doesn't look great, but this is the blue with a tiny touch of the green that we're already using just to keep them like similar. And this will really bump up. Like it's really going to bump up the painting, having this other color, this other value and to darken those dark spots even more. And like squinting like right here on the bottom of this leaf is also very dark. around the edge
Oops. Alright. It goes up here a little bit. Sorry, my Etsy's just, things are happening over there. And we'll come on down this side. And I'm going to lightly brush in, again, some blue here. I'm going to do just one side of the leaf, and you'll kind of probably be able to see, like, the difference of, like, value, like how it pops out. Let's follow that leaf. Again, some people might not want to do blue. Because it is a little bit more... Every painting that you see me do, not in paint night, but sometimes in paint night too, but I always add colors that are not naturally in it already because that's just like who I am. I just like to make stuff brighter and more saturated <laughs> and colorful than um, they're supposed to be. So I always sneak multiple different types of colors into stuff like that. <laughs> And just some up here. And again, you can use that same technique, right? Like take off the excess paint off of your brush onto your rag, get it wet, and you can like buff it out. Buff it out, baby. Same in here. This is like the darkest part of the leaf because realistically this leaf is pointed in a different direction. So we're going to bring some of that blue into there, right? Oh my gosh, I almost kicked it. Almost dropped my camera and my phone again just for another catastrophe. So let me just zoom out quick. Oh my gosh. What just happened? My. How did that turn off? My monitor's off. Can you guys still see me? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, what in the heck? Did it just come unplugged or something? That's so weird. You guys, whoa. Can you see me now? Just sweating. My whole computer just went black, but it looks like we're still on. We're still good to go. Okay, that's weird. We'll just continue on. Did you guys hear the cheering outside? Okay, um, too hot. Oh my gosh, it is too hot too. Um, I was just zoom, uh, zooming out here so that you guys could see. It's crazy that that all dilly, um, unplugged. So see how we've added the value onto this side and not this side. And you can already see that it already gives it a lot of depth, hey? It gives it a lot more depth than the other side. But again, like playing with different colors might stress people out. Let's just go around the edges. One thing that I'm gonna get you guys to do if you're using this blue even if you're not, we'll do it something else. Loving the blue. Hopefully people don't hate me, says Nico. No, it's all in... It's good. At least it's not hair. Exactly. It's a very easy step to skip if you're not comfortable with it. It's not a big deal at all. I'm going to draw... Maybe this is a little bit darker. Right? I was going to make us go back in and kind of do some darker... like add some black to our green and darken up some spots anyway. So this is kind of doing that in a nicer way, because like I said, I always talk about black being a very powerful pigment and it's sometimes kind of getting in the way um, and dulling out some of your colors. So realistically adding this blue does make it a little more colorful and fun. Again, if you want to get really um, into color theory, you can, um, the opposite of the color wheel 
of green is red. So red is actually what you're supposed to mix with green when you want to darken green properly. Um, it gets, again, very touchy and it's very like color. Like we, this is stuff that we learn like in art college. Um, and again, isn't something that people who are just painting leisurely for fun and stress-free have to think about. <laughs> Um, but again, if somebody here is interested in it, I, it's something that, uh, you guys should look into. Color theory was a very difficult class <laughs> in, uh, art college and like haunts my dreams hard. And, uh, it like borderline ruined me a little bit because now I like can't do anything. Well, I guess it's a good thing. Um, I can't do anything with like thinking about, without thinking about the color. It stumps me sometimes. Um... But it's a good thing to have. It's a good problem to have. So one thing that even if you didn't do all this blue that the rest of us were doing or that some of us were doing, I am going to suggest that, because we're not outlining. Outlines the devil sometimes and it stresses people out too. But we do need to darken up some of these areas to add a couple more shadowed spaces. So if you're not using this bluey green that we just made, I would suggest to add a touch of black into your green and get a little old skinny paintbrush out. And we're just like cir like circling, like outlining these is important, right? Give it a little bit of uh, depth in there. Give it a little bit of an edge so it just doesn't feel like a white polka dot on top of it. Let's see how I'm circling just around with this darker blue. Like it honestly sounds like there's like a festival outside. I need to see if there's like one of the tents were built close to us. Okay, and then one other thing with this darker color that you sh that I would like you to do is come down the left hand side of your middle stem. You have to learn all color theory from microblading. See, there you go. Again, it's like very good information to have and like cool colors appear far, warm colors appear close to the human eye. Like things like that are like great to know. It just can get overwhelming sometimes when you have to remember it all every time you do something, every time you draw something, paint something. But see, I just added a dark line on the left hand side of that stem. And you can bring it underneath some of them if you want. Oops. All right. You guys, I think we've got, oh, the stem. That's fine. The stem is literally, you guys know, you're pros. If you made it through this, even if this is your first paint night, you'll know. Get some green. Add some white to it. Make it a little bit lighter. Maybe add a touch of yellow if you want. And we're just going to go on the right-hand side of this stem and just draw a lighter line up it. Right? So the left-hand side, if we zoom in there, right? We That whole thing was dark. And then I just added some light green and I put a skinnier line onto the right hand side of the stem. All right? Right? How's that? And again, to each your own. You can go through with that yellow green if you want to add some more highlight. Like you, the world's your oyster. You can pick at this for as long as you want, add as much detail as you want. But realistically, what we've got right now, we've got a Monstera, folks. Right? And I'm just picking at it like a jerk, but... We've got a Monstera. One thing that's just important for you guys when it comes to the bottom here, make sure that you have a dark line of your leaf that will give you a... a a change of um, space for your little leafy underneath, your stem underneath it. And then when it comes to the background, like, I'm going to paint it pink. 
the doy. And the background is just like me, messy and unplanned. It's my favorite part. You schlob it around. <laughs> that line actually just made more sense than it, I meant it to. <laughs> For people who know me. Um, <laughs> if Justin is still here. We'll talk about that another time. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go in. This is just background completely up to you. I'm just taking some like light pink. It's actually um, light portrait pink. <laughs> Justin, I said, um, the background's like me, messy and unplanned. <laughs> but I'm just going to grab the pink paint and with some water, I'm just going to like messily... <laughs> And I didn't even mean it to make as much sense as that did. Um, I'm just going to messily, like, come close to but not touch my plant. Okay? Like, I guess, again, sorry, I'm going back and forth just giving you guys, like, a headache. But see what I mean by close to but not touching? Because I kind of like to give that little yellow line and that white line... And if you want to be dry, brushy, cool, like mine's going to be messy. Like forget about worrying about center and out. Like I want it to be just textured and cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know my poor parents probably like don't want me to talk about it as much, but like, yes. <laughs> they did many things. For me to not be here, <laughs> and I'm here. <laughs> Suckers! <laughs> but that's what just makes me laugh, is that I literally didn't plan. Um, that wasn't a, a time. I was a very happy accident. Oh, yeah, that's what they always say. They get very mad. I'm a vasectomy baby, so I'm just, uh, I'm like a small percent, you guys. Um, but surprise! Some fries! All right! <laughs> <laughs> yeah honestly honestly so now you guys got some more information about me <laughs> we're painting a plant it's great <laughs> but um see what i mean by like the messy look in the background i think is like cool i don't know there's some like white peeking through like some like green got on my brush and mixed in there <laughs> here lies janimal <laughs> yeah. I know I always forget about that I'm like oh I should be able to talk about it it's my truth but it's like oh but it's also <laughs> their story now love you mom and dad and that's what she always says because I always say mistake and she gets pissed she's like not mistake miracle Taylor <laughs> messy and unplanned that's just gonna be my caption <laughs> my caption on social media is now oh that's funny Back to background painting. <laughs> okay, see how we are coming along here. There's still peaks of white. Justin's line is part-time fabulous, full-time mess, and that's why we're friends. <laughs> I like that. Justin, we're meant to be. Sid says mug idea. Oh my god, yes. Oh, love that. Anyway, sorry for the distraction there, you guys. I'm just uh, <laughs> painting a background, paint, painting away. I'm glad that you're enjoying the blue. Did everyone else like the blue or try the blue? Yes, nice, Sid. Awesome. Cinderella, I know you're a colorful gal. I imagine that you did too. Um, but when I did, like, talking about, like, the watercolory style of the plants I did before. So those type of shadows and stuff. Of course, neon orange background. Here we go. Um, I knew it. 
the uh shoot what was i talking about oh yeah when i do those really watery backgrounds like so the painting's flat when i paint them and the green and blue just like mix so cool in the water like you never know what it's gonna look like until it fully dries i love i live okay you guys i think we have a cutie little planty Let's just get some in there. Oops. And again, I don't like to paint to the edge. I like to have that like painterly finish. Some of you might not. But that's literally how I get this style or this look in the background is just like throwing paint around. I'm just trying to hear where this announcer I need to see where the tents are downtown because I'm surprised I can just hear this man so clearly. Okay, folks. Yeah, but maybe Hudson's, yeah, but it sounds like it's like literally like, like it might be Broken City. Hmm. Hmm. Who knows? Okay, here we go. See what I mean by like some like dirty paint got in there, but like I don't know, that looks cool. Added to the madness. To the messy unplanned madness. Am I right? Um I think we have a plant, folks. Uh again too, style wise, whatever, like you can put some schlobs of yellow in there if you wanted to. Like pure yellow, because we haven't done that. Especially if you started with pencil. Feel free to go in with just like pure yellow on your brush and just, I don't know, put some colors of it some places. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just playing around. Ooh, that probably was too much there. Oh, well. Anyway, do we have a plan? Do we have any questions? Is this, how's, what are we thinking? Here it did take us the full two, whatever, hour and 45. Um, but I think it's pretty cute. I like it. I might hang it in my house, you guys. Sometimes paintings make it to our walls. Sometimes. Um, yeah. I don't know. Now I'm just distracted. We've got them on Stara. You can send them in if you wish. Got another email. Um, as I wait for y'all to send those in, what do we got next week? We're painting Patrick Star from SpongeBob. Nobody asked. <laughs> I just wanted to do it. <laughs> I was just like, what are like fun characters that could be good? I thought maybe we should do SpongeBob himself, but he's a little bit more difficult than Patrick. We'll start with Patrick. Hugo's excited. Okay, perfect. Then that's all that matters. Then it's not only for me, it's also for Hugo. It'll be a good one. Krusty Crab. No, this is Patrick. <laughs> Oh, I need to watch more Spongebob again. The fun song is just always in my head. I just haven't seen New Age Spongebob. Krusty Krab. Nope, this is Patrick. Hi, he's just so cute. Um, And then, sorry, a distraction. Oh yeah, and then the week after that, we're painting a cutie little popsicle. A watermelon popsicle. Because I wanted to paint watermelon and all the pictures were just like cheesy. And then I saw the popsicle and I was like, damn, that's cute. I think that's a good, that's a winner. And I knew people would like. Um, Hugo's also excited. Okay, Hugo, number one fan. Love it. Love it, love it. Okay, let me move some stuff around here. I've got... A couple pictures sent in. My glasses are just... Takes me a second to be able to see again. 
Um, okay, 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 what am I looking for? Some... Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, 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 let me see. Nikki just did two, casually. Oh, where'd it go? Hey. What? My Instagram's supposed to be right here. Hello, little guy. There we go. Oh, my eyes itchy again. Okay, okay, where am I? My life's all over the place. Oh my gosh, Oprah, come in with the new prop props. Thank you. You guys, Nikki just knocks out two. Got the splatter in there, like a... Uh, I was going to say like a pro, but more like a, well, yes, like a pro, but like an OG. I love that. The white background's nice too. Okay. Let me see quick before, just to make sure. I think we're going to see all of our old. Oh no, we won't. Ah. Does it say work in progress still? That's okay. That's true. That it's. I mean, not that's true. I know that sometimes you take a little bit longer on the backgrounds, and that's great. The leaf, beautiful. Beautiful, as usual. Not surprised. Also, oh my gosh, talking about people sending me stuff. Well, I have y'all here. Oh my gosh, dropping my glasses. I haven't posted it on Instagram yet because I didn't have time, but... Nico, I'm touching them with my painty hands. What a sin. Look what Nico sent me. These resin alcohol ink coasters and color schemes that I reminded him of. You guys, are they not beautiful? Look at that. And like with this like wood burn and that. I'm going to be posting on my Instagram and I know people are going to be curious because like, oh, like this one. Oh, I love, love. They turned out great. The light's not doing them justice, but they are beautiful. I'll post about those soon. Thanks again. Nico. I love them. I really do. Um, oh, what was I doing? Love those. I made a take coaster for your work area. Heck yeah. You guys, that's just the best. Oh! I'm just seeing this now, right now. Uh, Cinderella, me and Megan will do it together if you want to. Um, email me. Hello at taytayski.com is the best. But also, love this. The backgrounds, I love the colors. I would never have thought to mix orange with in the background and that looks so good. I love, 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 love. Great, everyone did good again. I think there's a couple more we're waiting for still too. Oh, the coaster, oh, with the sticker. You crafty resin pouring all y'all, you're just, so impressive to me that you guys can make all these things. And we got a, oh, another beauty. And I love that we got the fish up here too. See, you got a nice pink in the background too. Okay, everybody nailed, everybody nailed it. Everybody nailed the leaves. Right? Okay. You pros. Boom, 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 boom. Did I miss any more? I know there's a couple people that couldn't make it tonight that are very excited um, to do it, which is good. <laughs> so much paint on these. Oh, did I get another one? Oh my gosh, yeah, duh. Oh my god, I forgot. <laughs> what a jerk of me. Um, uh, love the drippies. Is that like gold? Can I move this over? Gold dress. You even got some gold in the leaf okay liquitex gold honey honey tell me your secrets for that's uh, beautiful i love that 
I like the gold drips. That's a nice touch. Ha, tell me the secrets for making gold leaf stick where you want it to only. How do you apply gold leaf? And Nico's asked me before about what, because you, what did you try again? Nico, I can't remember. Um, so, hilariously enough, <laughs> I, where is it? So I know that you guys have seen me put like holographic pieces and stuff onto my uh, paintings before. And it's all from this like manicure kit. It's like a very colorful, very colorful manicure. Um, and it comes with this paint, this like foil fix. And you're supposed to just like swipe it on your nail and then like put that on. But I've been using it. Like, this worked perfect for my gold leaf. Like, absolutely perfect. This weird little, like, nail glue -sh stuff. It's the ingredients are aqua, polyurethane. Sorry. It's basically just glue. And so, yes. So, I, um, and this worked awesome. And then I read online that Mod Podge is supposed to be good. And that's where Nico and I's conversation ended. So I got the Mod Podge. It works not as good as this. This works better. The Mod Podge has a very um, short, like, you have to put it on. You have to let it wait to get a little tacky and then put it on. Like, you can't just put it on and then put the gold leaf on it wet, like super wet. It has to get a little tacky. But it's the shortest time that is perfect. So I don't know if you guys, like, on my gold leaf, on my plant ones, like, I did, like, a long, um, whatever, like, a frame around it. And first of all, tape. Like, you need to put painter's tape if you want that, like, super clean finish. So you painter tape the edges. You put the Mod Podge on, wait for a little bit, and then put your gold leaf on. And then let it sit for a long time. Like with the Mod Podge, I had to let it sit for like an hour or two, maybe even overnight just to be safe, um, to let the Mod Podge dry underneath it. But if you put it on too quick, the Mod Podge would just stay wet underneath it. Like what? And if you put it on too late, it would dry. So the Mod Podge like worked. Like the, in the end, the results still look the same as what this did. It just was touchier. And I like don't even know what this is. <laughs> like this is... It just came in this weird little kit, so, um, Modge Podge works, but, uh, I'll have to get, I'll have to get back to you on it. She's a fickle broad, that Mod Podge, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, Nico did white glue, don't recommend unless you look, want a messy look. So, yeah, Mod Podge worked, but Nico bought this speedball metal leaf solution. Like, what is that? I'm also just realizing for my paint night, uh, my sweatpants are falling off. I have to get a prop. Sorry, one second as we figure that out. In the hair. I obviously need to hold. Oh my god. My monstera. <laughs> it has googly eyes. <laughs> On the crispy ones. Wait, where is the thumbnail? Okay. Do I just hold this on the side and then I fold this painting like this? Like this? Oh no, wait, I think it has to be the other way around. Sorry, plant, sorry. Should I be in the leaves? Oh yeah, this is the winner. Like this. Right? I think that's good. Do I be scared? Am I just small back here? <laughs> okay, something in there. <laughs> the googly eyes. <laughs> It's because that one was crispy and scary, so I was just like, to make him look cuter and more approachable, I gave him eyeballs. But also, it's because my friend Christian's gonna love this, because it's from, like, one of the best Saturday Night Live skits. Oh, you mean I have to put googly eyes on myself? Like this? I need the good pretty leaf to be on the side. 
Anyway, something in there works. Sorry, Leaf. Sorry, Monstera, that I used you in such a way. Okay. Oh my gosh, my pants are just falling off. It's just a disaster. Okay, well, guys. What am I looking at? Oh! Oh, you got, like, stuff, Nico. So he got, like, actual, like, stuff stuff. Um, what am I looking at? Where's my Instagram thing? Adhesive size. The Mona Lisa speedball. So it's probably something. Yeah, let us know. Let us know for next time. Let us know, because it seems a lot of us are on that game. Not on that game, are on that gold leaf is stressful game. But, all right, fam. Here it took again till 10 anyway, even though I didn't think it would. Thanks for coming. Thanks for chilling with me through my hiatus of a couple weeks there. Um... I'll be back next Thursday. I know I keep saying that I'm going to do other live streams, but I'm not going to promise that as there's a lot of stuff going on right now. But soon enough. Soon enough. Thank you. We'll email about that class. Perfect. Had so much time. Per great. I mean, had so much fun. Thank you. Another games night. I know, Nico, you're right. Justin, we and Kenzie too. We need another games night. It'd be fun. We need it. We'll do one for sure. In <laughs> Yeah! Justin, in person! You guys, all three of us could be in the same place soon. It's too much to handle. Just kidding. Okay, but yeah, we'll do it. Amazing. We'll have prizes like last time. I actually still have one of the... Um, slob shirts <laughs> from last time anyway that's i'm so glad that you guys like those too because it's just us like chilling <laughs> i love that you guys want me to hang out with my friends and play games <laughs> twist my rubber arm <laughs> for sure we'll make that happen y'all the best thanks for hanging out as usual i love that we're just a little crew and uh oh yeah for the no but <laughs> You're just like making me speechless every four minutes. For the king, nobody's seen us play for the king. I, not to toot our own horn, but it would be very entertaining for other people to watch for sure. Okay, Justin, figure out how we do that from here. I have a gaming computer, but figure out if we need to get anything before then and we'll do it. We'll for the king it. It'll be like a seven hour stream. <laughs> Cause that's how long it happened. That's how long we play it every time. That's why I haven't played it in forever. Cause we need to like book out like three days. And like for the king, you guys is like not a game that I <laughs> would ever think that I would enjoy. Like when Justin showed, I remember the first time he explained it to me and when we started playing it, I was like, this game <laughs> is not it. <laughs> It's like Dungeons and it's like Dungeons and Dragons, but like I don't know. And at first I was like, ew. But then like two hours in, like Dan like could hear me yelling like, "Roll the seven! Look out for the jelly! We need a scroll!" Like we were so into it, like so into it. And it's not even like combat. It's like roll a dice to see if you'll like kill someone. And it's just it's a good time, you guys. We have so much fun. So I'm sorry that I judged it from the beginning. I'm an asshole. But we have spent many hours playing for the king, and I think it probably would be good content. Like, I'm not against it. All right, guys. Again, ask me to play a game that I freaking love with my friends. Sure. Anytime. I just, uh, yeah, no, we'll plan it. Don't worry. Y'all know first. Instagram's where I post most of the things, but I'll always update my caffeine schedule. My eyeball's just itchy. Um, YouTube, I update every Thursday, just right after here. 
Um, I'm working on some other YouTube videos that aren't, I know I say this every time, but I actually have one finished to post that's not a paint night onto the YouTube, which is good. And uh, there's a little, yeah. That's all I'm gonna say right now. I just keep almost giving you guys too much information about all the secret surprises that are on the way. So just catch you next Thursday. Every Thursday, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We're painting. Okay? See you next time. <laughs> catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Bye, guys.